So how could the UK ramp up testing capacity? Julian Peter is Professor of Epidemiology at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. He advocates a radical approach. In every small lab in, I mean, there's probably some in sixth forms and there are hundreds in universities. The industry has a vast number of, of, of PCR machines. What's these, a PCR machine? It's a, a completely standard piece of laboratory equipment for analysing DNA, or in this case, RNA. And what it does is it detects a particular bit of a gene and then multiplies it a million times so it's easy to spot. It's a very sensitive method for viral detection. So in a sense, what you're saying is that the government should approach every lab in the country, private, public, and essentially ask everybody to join in the testing programme. Yes, I mean, every machine has somebody who knows how to operate it in the lab. So, I mean, you've got the machines in place, you've got the trained staff in place, and you just send them the reagents and the protocol, and after a day's practice, they'd be able to do it. What about quality control? It doesn't matter two hoots. The aim of this isn't to benefit the infected people you detect. It's to make sure that their households get go into quarantine as quickly as possible. It doesn't matter if you get even quite a substantial false positive and false negative rate. It wouldn't matter. If you stick a few households into quarantine by mistake, they're going to be tested a week later anyway. If you can get weekly testing set up, and people will accept that. I mean, people understand what the problem is and how urgent it is. I mean, every day's delay could be, you know, I mean, literally a few hundred deaths. And do you think that the private sector in particular would be willing to participate in this? They'd be delighted to. Why shouldn't they? I mean, this is a war effort. I think most of them would volunteer to. The problem before we even get to the point where we're putting the test in the lab, the Cabinet Office Minister today appeared to be saying that actually there's a shortage of chemicals with which to conduct the tests in the first place. Yes, but you don't have to get them from a sort of perfectly validated big pharma source. You ought to put out a call to all British biotech companies saying, if you you can make this stuff, we'll buy it. I mean, the fairly standard reagents, polymerase is the enzyme that does the DNA copying. So essentially what you're saying is, is that all the sort of protocols and rules that we would normally have around a process like this should be swept away so that we can simply get more tests done more quickly. Yes, including Category 3 laboratories. I mean, labs aren't supposed to handle specimens that might contain dangerous viruses for obvious reasons. But in this case, you've just simply got to set that aside and let anybody who's prepared to do it, do it. I mean, there'll be, the people in the lab will be at much lower risk than the NHS nurses and doctors who are dealing with the patients. But I mean, the risk of becoming infected handling these specimens, provided you have a mask and gloves, would be absolutely minimal. It's probably more dangerous walking to the lab than it is <laughs> getting the infection when you get there. If it is as straightforward as you suggest, why do you think the government hasn't taken this approach? Nobody's ever done it. I mean, I think the Germans have just started cranking it up. But I mean, it's a completely unprecedented situation and the need for this massive testing resource. And incidentally, I'm talking about testing hundreds of times more than the Germans are doing. I mean, to test the whole population once a week is 10 million tests a day. You want the facility to do 10 million tests a day, which is 14,000 small machines or a smaller number of big ones. And I'm pretty sure they're there already. One last thought, which is, why is it so important to get the numbers up? Because you've got to test once a week. I mean, it's a virus, which the the whole point of testing is to detect it before you've infected somebody. You test all all members of every household once a week. In addition, if people develop symptoms in the meantime, they self-quarantine. And everybody else carries on normal life. We can end the lockdown and prevent about 200,000 deaths. That's Professor Julian Peter. Well, let's hear now from Peter Openshaw. He's Professor of Experimental Medicine at Imperial College London and a member of the government's new and emerging respiratory virus threats advisory group. He's speaking to us tonight in a, in a personal capacity. Welcome, Professor Openshaw. Good evening. The government has talked, let's begin, there's lots of things to unpick there, but let's begin with the government statement that we heard from Michael Gove. There's a shortage of chemical that's needed for conducting the tests, presumably the one that Professor Pito has just been talking about. Is there a shortage and, and why don't we have enough of it in a stockpile somewhere? Well, I must say I wasn't aware of this shortage until it was announced today, um, I mean, as far as I know, there is there isn't a great shortage of supply, but um, so that's really new to me. I mean, we we do order polymerase on a regular basis, and I, as far as I'm aware, it should be should be available. I I suppose it must be true if it, it was announced uh, in the press conference. And and is uh, it something that, as Professor Pito suggested that if there is a shortage, that it actually could be relatively uh, easily manufactured by by other other people in the industry? 
Well, there are quite a lot of sources. I mean, it's not it's not usually a reagent that's particularly hard to get hold of, and it does have quite a long shelf life, particularly if you if you um, if you keep it in the freezer. So it could have been stockpiled potentially. Potentially, yes, yes.